What people were experienced in Asbury, uh, well, judging by the reports, is that sense of the presence of God. That it's just taking time aside from a world that is otherwise uh, filled with another spirit coming and being in the holy presence of God. The, the self-sustaining, life-energizing, beautiful, love-filled, light-filled presence of God. Different people have said, you know, were, were the, um, the college uh, right in, in, in closing it down? Um, others have said, well, you know, 60,000 suddenly turning up uh, on one tiny place is just too much for a place to sustain and um, keep going. Uh, and anyway, we we should we should be able to hold these things in every locality. Um, so, so the the Jesus move, uh, you know, that's recently been in the film. I don't know if it's, I don't think he's been shown over here, but in, in America, the Jesus Revolution film. Um, shows how it was you know it's a move that was not just in one locality it was just spreading amongst all well a lot a lot of the youth in in our nations and we were part of that uh in the 70s in in britain um but god did lay certain foundations upon our, our generation um the isaiah uh, phrases, phrases in Isaiah that we were repairers of the of the walls and the breaches, that we were to be raising up a highway of holiness in the wilderness, one ready for multitudes to be uh, going upon, um, that we were to set up way marks. Uh, originally that phrase meant in terms of the way marks whereby they went out from Israel, they would return by those way marks. Uh, it's a restoration type verse, but for us it's it's the way marks, the way marks of how Christianity functions, how Jesus installing himself in us as individuals functions, being born again. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and entering into the this new order that is run off planet, off creation, called the Melchizedek order of priesthood. It's a different order of priesthood, and anybody that turns to the Lord finds himself enrolled in this brand new priesthood. So uh, we can only speak biblically since the Jesus Revolution, um, because. Uh, we, we we just followed, started following. What does the Bible say? Uh, we re, we re, rediscovered that apostles and prophets exist today. Um, Pentecostals in the previous wave had already found that out to be so. But here's the problem, and this is the same problem that. King David uh, was a part of. Um, it was never right for Jews to choose to have a king. But God used that as a pattern to show aspects of this new king that he was going to install over the earth. Uh, but his reign would begin from heaven. Jesus. King Jesus. So, but nevertheless, both King Saul, who was the first king, and King David had an anointing to be king. You know, an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anointing, or anointing with oil, but with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but the two qualities of the character are roughly how roughly the difference between churches as we now know them since the Jesus Revolution 
and the kingdom itself and how the kingdom runs. Because they are two completely different things. You can't take a people fresh out of the world system and with viewing the world as its model and then expect them to build churches authentically. Because what happens, like King Saul, is you build them like a pyramid. The Pharaoh pyramid, Israel left. And that's what we have done all over the world with all these new churches that all run by one individual. When as we we look in the Bible, uh, we see in Paul there are 14 different ministry types in three lists. And we see in Revelation 12, the picture, the eternal picture of this woman, this wife of God, has a crown of 12 stars. Way, way too big for one individual. And so that's, that, that's the mystery of church, which is all to do with relationship with God, commandment one, with others, commandment two. It is the manifestation of that in the Holy Spirit. But first, we have to go into the ground and die like a grain. Because naturally, in our own natural consciousness and existence, which is totally false, we dwell alone. I'm not talking about... It's a deeper spiritual thing. You can be in the same house with people. But the tendency with all of us is, as it says in 1 Corinthians twelve fourteen to 26, that we just dwell with like body parts, body of Christ parts. If I'm a hand, I dwell with hands. If, I, if I'm a foot, I dwell with other feet. And so it goes on. And we don't receive one another. We don't even perceive one another in the spirit. Now, this accounts for some of the deep frustrations at the moment in, in humanity across the earth. We do not perceive how each other works. And that was what Myers-Briggs, a hundred years ago, both those women were trying to achieve. So that we wouldn't have these stupid societal divides, which the elites, the, the, oh yeah, we've got to call them greedy ones now, the greedy ones play upon to keep us all divided. So that we, Kingdom doesn't require the greedy ones. So the greedy ones don't want the kingdom to happen. Not without them being in control. Their total control is based on money being funneled up a pyramid layer, right, layer after layer after layer, right to the top. The few at the top, that's the only way that is manageable for them to rule and control everybody. But kingdom is completely opposite. And anyway, they are only <laughs> stooges for principalities and powers, Ephesians says. So they're, they're being enticed by wealth and control, but they are themselves controlled. <laughs> so all this when we when we start gathering together we are in another kingdom and we require mature people who know how to hold that presence in a locality and uh, unless we've gone into the ground and died we dwell alone we don't find it normal to be with other people in the presence of God in living all day long that way and that is clearly the apostolic blueprint in 1 John chapter 1 that's how Ecclesia began and ran so are the people of the world <laughs> interested in experimenting that because it's all done live 
Theological college won't teach you that. The gospel teaches you that. Who is up for real kingdom? And the simplicity of the kingdom is as simple as the Lord's Prayer. As simple and grueling as the Lord's Prayer. Those three inner parts of the Lord's Prayer are the three main kernels, the three main ropes by which Satan is tethered to the earth to run his kingdom. If we snap those ropes, all that will be left is kingdom. It's not not even that the kingdom has to come particularly, it's just (laughs) it will be released because Jesus is in all of us as us. And we can co-function. 